and it reads, For indeed he does not give aid to angels, but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. Therefore in all things he had to be made like his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. Amen. Amen. Um, the topic that I I chose hastily, <laughs> and after I chose it, I was like, what in the world? <laughs> Why did I even agree to preach? Uh, is a merciful and faithful high priest. And um, for a subtopic, something I really want to drive home is the words, God knows. God knows. Mm -hmm. Dear God, I ask you just to be with me during this time. I pray, Lord, that uh, you be glorified. Uh, God, let me decrease that you may increase. Amen. And God, just give me the words. Let me speak your truth, God. And I pray that your people are equipped. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 This has uh, by far probably been, no, by far, the most difficult uh, message that I've ever put together um, and I pray that uh, I'm able to articulate a few just even a few things to you um, so we'll see one thing that I love about the book of Hebrews is uh, it's just a I feel like anybody should be able to respect this book even like a non-believer like a lawyer should be able to respect this writing you know if it's Paul or whoever the way it's written it seems like Paul he, anyone who loves any type of literary work should be able to respect this book mm -hmm. because the writer is written to the, the, the uh, Christian Jews or the Jewish Christians in, in Jerusalem and the writer just builds this argument for Christ that is so compelling, so awesome. Um, I mean, it's just like jaw-dropping. Amen. Amen. You know the spirit is involved in that. Um, but the, one of the, the central themes is superior, superiority, that Christ mm -hmm. is superior. And so Amen. He goes throughout this book and he begins to point out all of the things in Judaism that are considered to be great things. And he just goes and just systematically just shows, yeah, you got this, but Christ is superior to that. Yeah. Amen. And this was good, and God was working in this, but but now Christ is superior to that. Um, and so it's just an awesome book to read. And with Paul, sometimes you got to, well, the writer. <laughs> One thing I love is that you have to uh, cut out a few of the commas. And go to the end and then go back, you know. I just, but it's, it's great, you know. So, um, but he starts with the angels. And he goes by showing how Christ is superior to the angels. And, and we know these beings are, they're, they're, they're great beings. And, you know, you hear people nowadays talking about they've seen angels. Uh, but there's no fear attached to that. And, and most of the times we see when the angel came on the scene, the first words that came out of their mouth was, do not be afraid. Um, because that's just the type of beings that God has created them to be in. And so, you know, I can see why people will, you know, consider them. They, they, they refer to as the Son of God. So we know they're ministering spirits and they can, can see them as, as being these great beings. But, but the writer says that God has given Jesus a name that's above their names. Amen. He's given them a name above angels. Um, and so we see this superior theme starting out right away and it runs over into uh into chapter two of hebrews and at verse five it says uh for he has not put the world to come of which we speak in subjection mm -hmm. to angels mm -hmm. 
Um, and, and right here, <clears throat> this may be kind of odd, but the, I feel like there's a turn where we get to see that God has this special connection to mankind. Amen. Mm -hmm. He, he, it's just something about man. I mean, he created so many things. He created uh, the birds of the air, the, the, the insects, the fish of the sea, the beasts of the field. He created so many things, things that, you know, when you, when you see them, sometimes you're even in awe of what they are. And when you learn the science behind them, he created so many things, but yet it was man that was made mm -hmm. in his image. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he has some type of special connection to man. Amen. And it goes right from verse 5, it goes into Psalm 8, and we know Psalm 8 where it starts out just so per great. What is a uh, man that mm -hmm. thou art mindful of him? Mm -hmm. And I, I think of those words, and there have been times where I've been low, and those words have come out of my yeah. mouth. But then those times where I've been like on the mountaintop, and those same words have been able to come out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. What is man that thou, you, O oh God? That you're mindful of him, mm -hmm. and he and after he uh, quotes Psalm eight, uh, a great portion of it, he says that man was made a little lower than the angels, but then towards the bottom it says, "Yet man was crowned with glory and honor, and set him over the works of God's hands." Mm -hmm. So he was made a little bit lower than these angels. Man was. But yet, it was man that God crowned with glory and honor. And it was man that he set him over the works of his We know that God gave him, gave, um, Adam and he gave him <laughs> dominion mm -hmm. over what he created. And we know the, the angels being these great beings, they were not given that dominion. It was to man, it mm -hmm. was to him that was made in his likeness that was given that dominion. And I promise I'm going somewhere here. Um, <laughs> but it, I just want to... we. We need to know about this, that God has Amen. a special connection with man, Amen. that God has a desire for community, he has a desire for a relationship with man. This has to be known. And this writer here, he goes about, I love the way he goes about it, and, um, and talking about how, you know, man was made a little bit lower than the angels. But then, now we're about to see how much he really cares, how much he really desires man, because in verse 9 he says, now Jesus was made. A little bit lower yeah. mm -hmm. than the angels. Amen. Uh, we're starting to see how much he cares about man now. Uh, and then we, we're going to see this comparison. And we're going to see these similarities. Verse 14 says that children partook in flesh and blood. And Jesus shared mm -hmm. in the same. That's right. Verse 11 says that he who sanctifies and those being sanctified are one. So we're, we're really seeing <laughs> even... Um, from, from what was written way back when, how the comparison is made to Jesus, and how Jesus and man, well, we're seeing the Word became flesh. That's what we're seeing. Yep. And uh, it's just so awesome because if you think, you know, sanct he who sanctifies, you know, he that's, you know, cleaning, cleaning them up, getting somebody clean, uh, making them pure, you would think that the one who sanctifies would be over the one who is being sanctified. Mm -hmm. But here it says that they are one. Mm -hmm. And that's because this is God's will. This is what God wants. The Bible talks about those that are in Christ will become joint heirs mm -hmm. with Christ. Um, and to me, this all leads up. You know, this we see Christ is superior to the angels. And then we see, okay, now I'm going to enter man into the picture. And, uh, and you know, and the Bible talks about new heaven, new earth, and how we'll rule, you know, and how we'll judge angels, you know, all mm -hmm. those things come up. So he, he brings man into the uh, equation, and he says that uh, he hasn't given this world to come. He hasn't given it. It's not under subjection to angels. And then he goes on talk. He goes right into what is man that thou art mindful of him. And then he brings Jesus into it. All right. And it, to me, it leads all up to verse 17 where it says that he had to be made like his brethren. Mm -hmm. He had to be made mm -hmm. like his brother. Amen. Mm -hmm. well, was Jesus really a man? He had to be made Amen. like Amen. his brethren. Mm -hmm. That he might be a merciful yeah. and faithful high priest mm -hmm. in things pertaining to God. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
And so I kind of want to camp out there just for a little bit. Um, I know we got 45 minutes. I doubt I take up that, that much time. But he had to be made like his brethren, that he might be a merciful, faithful high priest. Now, just, and I know people are going to touch on this all weekend long, so I'm going to just touch it a little bit. The office of high priest. We know uh, it was first set apart with Aaron, and the high priest had to wear special garments. They had, to, they had to dress a certain way, and all this was mandated by God. What they, God mapped it out. He gave the instructions. This is what they need to wear. This is what it needs to be made out of. This is what it needs to look like. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, with the tabernacle, there was this place behind the veil that was called the Holy of Holies. And it was, the high priest was the only one who could enter into this area. And even then, uh, God tells Moses to tell Aaron, don't don't come in just any time. You know, you need to come in when I tell you. To, when the cloud is, that's when you need to come in. But you can't just come in at any point in time. Um, and the high priest only went into this area that represented like the closest man could get to God, like the very presence of God that had the, the mercy seat in there. Man could only come in there once a year. The high priest went in once a year to make atonement for the people by the sprinkling of blood. And uh, of the, on the sin uh, of the sin offering on the mercy seat, and then he offered uh, then he offered up incense as well. Um, and so we we see the, the people the, the the high priest offered sacrifices for himself and for the people, and he was the only one. And he had to wear bells when he went in there. It's it's a uh, signal that he was going in, and then when he was coming out. And uh, if the bell stopped ringing, you know, <laughs> somebody went in there the wrong way. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, so we see this office of high priest, and we see, like, how, how necessary it is. And once we, uh, I promise you this week, as we hear these sermons, you're going to be able to see uh, more clearly, like, what God was setting up and what he was doing, how he was setting things up. And, and the thing about God is that I love how... We, we got to take things into context, and what I mean is God does things at certain times, and then he goes, and that's how he started out Hebrews. He spoke through the prophets. He spoke through, but now he's spoken through his son, you know, and so we're going to see this office of high priest. We're going to see how it was used by man. We're going to see how it wasn't necessarily used properly, but we see it was something that God ordained, and but it was all leading up to Jesus. And it's so, it's so I don't know, lofty, so mind-boggling to think that Jesus was not only lamb, <laughs> he was not only the sacrifice, but he was also the high priest, the one given the sacrifice. He was also the one that had to go up into the, the holy place Amen. and sprinkle the blood, you know, and, and not the one in heaven, I mean, not the one down here on earth, up there where the Father is. Um, and so it's just, it's just awesome, it's, it's just mind-boggling to even think about it. And it's like God was like, this process that I have laid out is going to be perfect through and through. The lamb is going to be perfect. The priest that's offering it to me is going to be perfect. Because if we look back, we can see there were priests that God had problems with. Eli, the high priest, God had problems. He still allowed him to inhabit the office for a while, but God had issues with him. There were two high priests at the time of Jesus, who basically cruci uh, led him to be crucified. So uh, we, we see the office, but yet we see the, the, the heart that God desired for the office. Man, once again, messing things up. Uh, so God says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send my son. He's not only going to be the lamb. He's not only going to be the sacrifice. He's not only going to be without blemish in that as the lamb, but he's also going also to be without blemish in the heart as the high priest. Amen. Amen. And I would say to you that God setting aside, making this office, he wants to be pleased with the high priest. He desires to be pleased with the high priest. I mean, the high priest is the one, it's kind of like an intercessor in a sense. I mean, the, the high priest is the one that's making, he, you know, it's like, God, I'm, I'm standing before you for all these people. I'm doing this for all. So, God, I think God really wants to be pleased with that person. And I think about uh, with Job, before he was even, before there was a legal priesthood, uh, legal, quote, unquote, legal priesthood, we have Job, and God says to, I accept Job. 
Eliphaz and your two friends that don't accept you, you need to go take your sacrifices, take them to Job, because I accept him. And he'll pray for you, and I'm going to accept, I'm going to hear his prayers for you. And so we see that this, this office of pre high priest is not to be taken lightly, and that God indeed wants to be pleased with the high priest. And who, who more to be pleased with than his son, Jesus? And I will say that the office of high priest was necessary for Jesus. It was, it was, it was absolutely necessary. And I love here how it says that he had, just like the office was necessary, him being made like his brethren was necessary as well. So, you know, forget all the groups, cliques, whatever, uh, sects that say, well, you know, he wasn't really a man. You know, that he, he, he didn't really come in the form of a man. Forget all, forget all of that. Because it's clear here that he had to be made like, there was no other way. He had to be made like his brethren. And it says, he had to be made like his brethren that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. Now when we think about merciful, full of mercy, full of compassion, and if we just begin to just think about that and, and it just it just begins to make sense. Like God, and this is where I'm getting into my God knows section. And why so it should be it's so important to us and how this should instill so much faith in us and so much trust in us. Because God knows what it's like to be in agony over something. He knows. Remember the prayer in the garden. Mm -hmm. Remember the, the, the sweat uh, the, the, that was pouring from his body like great drops of blood. Remember he, told, he said, I have a baptism to be baptized with and I am distressed until that time comes. I mean, he knows what it's like to be in agony over something. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so when we're there are times in this life where we're going to be in agony, you know, forget the preaching that tells you that, well, if you have enough faith, those times won't come. That's, you know, we can throw that out the window. There, there are going to be times where we feel as though we're Amen. in agony. Amen. But God knows Amen. what it's like to be in agony. Amen. That God knows what it's like to be lied on. Amen. And to be falsely accused when all you're trying to do is help and love Amen. somebody. And since I've been around or been in the church, it seems like we see it so much in our church circles. Mm -hmm. Well, people have been pouring out all they can to just help and love somebody. Mm -hmm. And the lies come in. And the false accusations come in. And it makes you weary in your well-doing. But God knows what it's like to feel that way. Yes. Amen. Maybe you're at work and you're just trying to be a faithful employee and you got it going on at work. God knows what it's like Amen. to feel that way. Amen. God knows what it's like to be physically persecuted for your association with the true and living God. We have sisters and brothers all over the world, probably right now in this moment, who have been physically persecuted drug away from their families, drug into prison, uh, beat on just because they're a child of God. And even in that, God knows what it's like. Uh, God knows what it's like to be tempted to provide for yourself outside of the will of God. Forty days, forty nights, no food. And Satan comes to tempt him and say, turn these stones in the bread. Jesus was tempted to make provision in a way that God had not willed for him to, to do so. And Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And there can be times in this life where we too want to jump out on our own. <coughs> do it the way we want to do it. Because the job offer, it offers more money. 
Um, and so we want to, this is going to be a better way for me to provide for my family. And, you know, I, and so we begin to kind of trust in the things that say in God we trust instead of actually trusting in God. And so uh, we want to, God, but Jesus knows what it's like to be tempted to do that, to provide for your own self. Jesus knows what it's like to be tempted by pride. When he was taken up and Satan said, if you are the son of God, if you are the son of God, you can just jump down. It's written that he will give angels charge over you. They'll bear you up. They'll, they'll take hold of you. They won't, let your, they won't let your foot dash the stone. And Jesus could have very well said, I'm going to show him that I'm the son of God. He was tempted by pride too. And I know there's going to be times when we might be, when we're falsely accused. Or we wanna, might want to stick our chest out a little bit. There might be times where we, where we are tempted in areas to be prideful about certain things. And then afterwards, when it's all said and done, we're just like, man, where, where is this coming from? Why, why was I tempted in such a way? Why, how, how could I even, even if you don't fall into it, you just, sometimes we feel bad just for being tempted by stuff. And it's like, but he knows. He knows Amen. what it feels like to be tempted by pride. He knows what it feels like to be tempted to chase the riches and the possessions of this world. As Satan took him up and said, if you just bow down and worship me, I'll give you all. I'll give you dominion over all of this. And it seems like we see the same thing on TV. We see the same thing in movies. We see the same thing with family members. And, and we're, tempted. We, we're tempted to try to chase after these things. But, uh, but we know that if we, the more we chase this way, we're ch if we chase towards the world, we're chasing away, we're running away from God. And so it's like uh, we, we are bombarded by these things at times. But Jesus knows what it's like to be tempted by those things. He, he knows what it's like to mourn the loss. Of a loved one. Amen. He, he knows what it's like to feel alone when even your closest friends have seemed to forsake you. Mm -hmm. yeah. He knows what it's like to be betrayed by, betrayed by someone that's close to you. Mm -hmm. He Amen. knows what it's like to be denied by someone that you trusted, so that one, someone that you held so close. And so we find we can find ourselves in these same situations. We can find ourselves seem like we're betrayed by someone that we've put so much into. Someone that we've given so much of ourselves to. We might find ourselves betrayed by someone that we, we shared so, we held so many things in common. We, we live life together and we find ourselves betrayed by this person. But he knows. And that is why he's full of mercy. Amen. He knows, and that is why he is full of compassion. Amen. God knows. Amen. And I will say this, and God being made like man is more for man mm -hmm. than it is for God. Now, it is totally according to God's purpose and God's will, but what I'm saying is that I want to tell I believe mm -hmm. because God is, you know, so many times in the Old Testament, he's described as full of mercy. Mm -hmm. And he's described as full of compassion. He's described as, as gracious and, and slow to anger. I mean, we see this in the Psalms, but every other Psalm you see this uh, in the Old Testament. And so him being made like man, it says that he may be a merciful and faithful high priest. I think it speaks more to that we may know that he knows. Mm -hmm. You know, he said that he knows, mm -hmm. but you know, God is all about, like, he, he, he does, you know, he asked Abraham, mm -hmm. he said, kill your son. Mm -hmm. Then he didn't let Abraham go through with it. Mm -hmm. He says, but I'm, I won't ask, I'm not going to ask you to do something that I'm not going to, because he did it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hebrew, he said it pleased him to bruise his son. Mm -hmm. All right, and so, uh, so he can say it, but now we know for a fact, because he went through it. Mm -hmm. There's no excuse on our part. We cannot say he's not full of mercy. We cannot say he's not full of compassion. So the people, atheists and agnostics, they might want to say, well, if God is so good, then why is he allowing all these things? And why? He, he, in the discussion, we cannot say he's not full of mercy because he, he walked on this earth just like us. He walked in my shoes. 
He knows how it is for me. Mm-hmm. And he's full of compassion. Mm-hmm. That's why he's up there at the right hand interceding for us, even right now as we speak. Because he's full of compassion. That's why he had to, he came down from glory because he was full of compassion. And now I definitely know because he was made like me. Mm-hmm. He emptied himself. He humbled himself to become like me. And now my faith can be strengthened. Now when it says he's a merciful and faithful high priest, I know he's a merciful and faithful high priest because he was made like me. Amen. Faithful. Trustworthy. I think about all the times that Jesus was presented with another way that he could have gone. I'm thinking about when he was in the garden and he prayed that prayer and I, I'm just I know it's something that we 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 hear we might hear often and we, we might really understand, but he prayed the prayer, not my will, but thy will be done. And if if we want to see anybody that was um, I mean he said my my soul is if there's any other way, God. If there's any other way, I mean it, he was not like this, he was not the Avenger that we, you know, the movies that we see the Avengers. You know, he, it hurt Jesus. Every whip, every piercing, it hurt. That was a lot paid for our sins. Amen. Amen. And he knew what was going to happen. And he said, not my will, but thy will. Amen. Faithful. Because he knew what God's will was. So he was, fa- I know it's going to hurt me, but he was faithful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, when, uh, when Peter cut off the man's ear, and Jesus said, don't you know that I can pray right now? And 20 legions of angels, 20 legions of angels would come right now and put an end to all of this. But he says if if I do that, the scriptures won't be fulfilled. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Faithful. Faithful. Mm-hmm. All the way through. The Bible says that he was obedient even to the death of the cro- on the cross. Faithful. It's enough for him to say that he's faithful. But we see it in the scriptures. That he held fast to the will of God. All the way through, no matter what came, he held fast to it. Merciful, faithful, high priest. The man for the job. Amen. Amen. The one God is pleased with. Amen. Because now this high priest, as he's going through all of this, knows what he's doing for the people. And possibly there was a there was a strength provided to him in that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is this is for my God's children. Mm-hmm. He wants to be reconciled to those that were made in our image. I look around and I see him they're like a sheep without a shepherd. I see them. They're poor. They're longing for righteousness. They're thirsting for righteousness. I see them. And they, they, they need truth. They don't have truth. I see them and they're slaves to sin. Merciful. Faithful. And when a person is faithful, that means they can be trusted. If if I give if if I've had set out a task for Pat to do and he's shown that he's been faithful in that task, <coughs> the, the 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 word that describes him as faithful, what it means to me is that I trust him. I can trust him. He is trustworthy. And so now we're presented with life's problems. When we're confronted by a real enemy, Satan, 
in the principalities of this world. We got someone that we can trust. Because he's been faithful. Amen. We have someone we can trust. Because he's walked in our shoes. Mm-hmm. You know how sometimes someone can come and say things to us and we're like, you, you haven't lived my life. You don't know the things that I've been through. Well, we can't say that about Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's why the scriptures say that, you know, there's no temptation in the sun that man hasn't been uh, gone through. But it says he's faithful mm-hmm. to provide a way of escape. Amen. Amen. He's faithful. Mm-hmm. And so now, because I know he's a merciful and faithful high priest, and I find myself in the area of temptation, and I know that he's faithful... I need to get my, and I'm feeling weak, and I feel like I can't. I need to get my eyes open and look for that way of escape because he's, because he's faithful. And he Amen. said he is faithful to provide. Amen. So knowing this, it says that for, right, verse 18 says, For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. Mm-hmm. So being made like us, and once again, I just, to me, I, I don't know what it is. My mind has just is seeing it differently than any other time that I've ever seen it because it, it's it was all done for me, and it's like it's done that I may like I can trust him in this. I can trust him that he's able to aid me. Mm-hmm. Yes. I can trust him that he's able to help me mm-hmm. because he's the merciful and faithful high priest. Amen. Mm-hmm. And it goes back to that special connection. That God has for man. Right before it in verse 16 says he doesn't give aid to the angels. But aid is given to the children of to the seed, to the children of Abraham. Mm-hmm. To man. Those that were made in his likeness. Those that were made in his image. So as we think about Jesus being a merciful and a faithful high priest. We must know that he had to become like us. We can't take his humanity out of the picture ever. Amen. 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 And we can draw comfort. We can be strengthened by knowing that he became like us. And knowing that because he came like us, we should know more than more than any other time that he is full of mercy. <coughs> and that he is faithful. Amen. And so if we reckon that he's faithful, that means that he holds true to his promises. And so no matter what we may find ourselves in this life, mm-hmm. Job said it right when he says, man, days are short and full of trouble. Jesus didn't promise us that there wouldn't be trouble. He didn't promise us there wouldn't be heartache. He didn't promise us that there would not be pain. Matter of fact, what we see in the scriptures, a lot of people who were close to God, we see like they went through a lot of stuff in this world. And it makes sense. It makes sense because the world should be at war. The world is at war against the kingdom of God. So it, it yeah. just makes sense that we Amen. don't fit sometimes, that we are misfits in certain circles. It just, it makes sense. Amen. But when we find ourselves getting weary in our well-doing, the Lord knows I found myself there. Where it's like, God, I... I'm trying to hold on. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to run this race the way you've designed it. Amen. God, I'm trying to feed your sheep. Mm-hmm. God, I'm trying to be faithful as a as a husband, as a father, as a as an employee. God, I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to do all that I can. And God, right now, I feel weak. God, I feel a little worn. I can draw strength on this. Because he was weak. Amen. He was worn. I know he cares. So I want to encourage you today, saints. When it says he's a merciful and faithful high priest... It means just that. Mm-hmm. Amen. Call on him. Mm-hmm. Call on him. 
one of my deepest prayers when I don't know what to do is Lord have mercy some people are with taking the trying to take the fight to Satan but I I believe we got a sovereign God who Satan can't do anything without without God's allowing and I say God have mercy yeah. amen someone sick God have mercy I need strength God have mercy he's full of it so I encourage you today uh, saints to know that when it says this it means it he is first merciful he is faithful he is the high priest that God had done he's the one that God was pleased with <coughs> And he's sitting at the right hand of the Father right now. Amen. And that we can call on him. And wherever you find yourself at, and you feel like your closest friend may not understand, or your spouse may not even understand, your children may not understand, your parents may not understand, God knows. Amen. 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 Comments, brother? Thank you, brother. It's very powerfully ministry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cast all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Yeah. I like the continual uh, emphasis that Jesus knows. He's walked in my shoes. I never, I guess, I never thought about it like that, but he's walked in my shoes too. But it's a very real sense in which we all ought to think about it that way. He's mm -hmm. walked in my shoes. And the humanity of Christ, as Brother Durante, Durante pointed out and well said, expressed, is uh, is one of the uh, aspects of him that we we need to see so clearly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if if we if this is uh, obscured in any way. See, we, to our understanding, then we we actually lose uh, we we lose this ministration of succor and aid and assistance that he gives. You know, that's right. In a practical way, see, and, and actually in, <coughs> in down the road, actually it can even have more uh, serious consequences than that. But it's very important to see not only uh, Jesus' uh, divinity, but also his humanity. Yeah. You know, he. Uh, you, re you recall that in, in the days of his flesh, that he he referred to himself more as the Son of Man That's right. than as the Son of God, and he certainly was the Son of God, to be sure. And that's our confession, you know. Mm -hmm. But but he continually referred to himself as the Son of Man. It just repeatedly he refers to himself as that with that title. But that's his way of identifying with us. Mm -hmm. His, his humanity was to an end. You know, we needed a man. It wasn't something that angels couldn't do this. This was something we needed a man. The word needed to become flesh. And this humanity was to an end. And the end was to aid humanity. To be, to be able to, in order to be a faithful and merciful high priest. Had he not become a man. You know, he needed to become a man so that he could be faithful merciful, a merciful high, high priest, and, and a, able to succor them, able to come to our aid, able to say, I know what they need. <laughs> but not only not only just knowing it, but also the power to supply it. Mm -hmm. See, Job was able to see that yes. long before us. He said, I need someone that can put his hand on me, touch me, and touch God. He needed that. Mm -hmm. He didn't know who was going to be at that point. God had to open all that up. So. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 We're in the same boat as Job. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I appreciated this, um, seeing this um, mercy in all this and being willing to suffer. So this was part of it also, is that he learned obedience to the things he suffered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So part of his being a faithful, merciful high priest, he had to 
be made perfect through sufferings, he also had to be able to taste death for every man. This involved having to be a man. But then, you think, when you pray and you ask God to forgive you, you know he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We have a faithful high priest So we know also that he is a, we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the That's feeling right. of our infirmity, right. but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So not only do we have comfort in that time of temptation, we can look to the one who overcame uh-huh. every temptation mm-hmm. he ever faced. Mm-hmm. He's got the key to victory. Yep. Amen. You know, thinking about the high priest, what if what if the high priest wasn't faithful? We don't want to think about this too much. But <laughs> you know, th- there's a lot of, you know, no. your life, your well-being, your standing before God hinged upon, depended upon the high priest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if, yeah. if he was faulty in some way, if he made a blunder, it affected everybody. Mm-hmm. And you're, you're standing before, see, but we have, well, let's get beyond that. We, don't, we have a faithful high priest. <laughs> We have one who is faithful. We don't have to. We what what such boldness now to come before God. This faithfulness on the part of the high priest um, actually goes two ways. There's a sense yeah, in which right. he's faithful in the discharge of it to usward, but he's also faithful to God yeah. in the in the discharge of it uh, of this. So this, this is done. This is done. I mean entirely according to the will of God mm-hmm. and with the approval of God. Yes. Mm-hmm. It seems that his faithfulness is not just in simply our atonement, but it says he's able to come to aid for those who are tempted, mm-hmm. not just those who have sinned mm-hmm. at those moments. It's almost right. as if his faithfulness aids us in our faithfulness, not just our standing before God, but in our uh, actual response to God. You know, uh, I'm thankful that he does intercede for us in our sin, but he also aids us as we approach the temptation of sin. Mm-hmm. He aids Amen. us in remaining faithful under the temptation, not just having the forgiveness after the That's sin. Right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Amen. Like you said, provides the way of escape. Yeah. Make he, see God is able to make a way. Uh-huh. It's our it's our task to like find the way. God he makes the way. He makes a way of escape and he's able to just overthrow enemies. <laughs> I like you brought that up. You know, we, that, that's why we call upon God for mercy. Even in a situation that seem, might seem like everyone's coming, everything, everyone's <coughs> coming against us, but we can just ask God for mercy. And, well, then they'll just fall down. Jesus just say, I'm here. <laughs> and everyone just falls down. And yeah. You have a way of escape. So, Patty, even what you just said there about we, we, can, we can come and ask God for mercy. The, way, the reason we know that is because of Jesus. Mm-hmm. God, God is merciful, as, as Brother said. You know, this all, all throughout the scriptures, merciful, merciful, full of mercy. But that that mercy wasn't demonstrated in the manner that which God desired in its fullness. Jesus demonstrated yeah. that mercy. Mm-hmm. He, that, that, that when 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 you see Jesus, you, you, you see God is merciful. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So that, that that working of God is unto what I was saying. See God. God needed a merciful and faithful high priest. He needed, he needed that, that one who was able to show mercy. Because he's the, he needed one that would be the, the exact representation of himself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, this, that this one, when, you, when you saw this high priest, you thought of God. <laughs> this, 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 remind, this is God. This reminds you of God. Mm-hmm. And so he chose one who the scripture says who would not fail. So he, mm-hmm. he chose, God chose this one. For this reason, he wouldn't fail in that which God had called him for. Amen. Mm-hmm. And he did. He 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 has he faithfully revealed the very nature and yep. person of God. Yeah. Amen. We've already sort of mentioned this a little bit, but I want to point out some more how that Jesus was a faithful high priest. He actually did what needed to be done. Exactly. When every every 
there was every reason for him to not want to accomplish the work of God. Mm -hmm. He did. He did go into the holiest with his own blood. Amen. Amen. He didn't stop on the outside. He went through with it. He is faithful. Mm -hmm. And he accomplished the service of God. Amen. Amen. think of this mercy, I think of, you mentioned the word compassion, and it's really, it's really difficult to think about Jesus without thinking about compassion. You know, it's re- this is something that's kind of, you think about Jesus, at least for me, it's one of the first things I think of, mercy, compassion, he's, the bruised reed, he will not, he will not break, and, and when, you know, when you're being tempted, that's kind of, I feel like a bruised reed, you know, this is, this is a time where we need to be strengthened. You know, it's a time where you need to be upheld, and he's he's equal to the task. In Exodus 34, you remember he says of God that showing mercy unto thousands, but he will in no wise acquit the guilty. So mercy is uh, when we, the the concept of mercy in the Bible actually implies a blood sacrifice. It implies that a provision that God has made for sin to be put away. See, the acquittal, acquittal would be like Cain. You know, just you know, I, let me just uh, let me just offer whatever I want, or let me climb up some other way. You know, but see, the the matter of mercy, it it it, it requires it requires Jesus for God to show mercy, it requ- for sin to have been put away. Otherwise, mercy could not be shown. So there is the angels. You know, the angels that sin, he showed no mercy. You know, but he, but the uh, but those uh, but see the. For the for those uh, the, like what is man, as Brother Durante was ministering in Hebrews eight and uh, Hebrews two and uh, Psalm eight, you know the mercy is is for for this particular this, these particular ones that that God has created and mm. uh, and they were who were who were pardoned by the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Any other thoughts? Only in this way did mercy and truth meet together, righteousness and peace and kissed each other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Only in that sacrifice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The atoning work mm-hmm. makes it possible. Yeah. Just and justified. I appreciated something that Delrante said about why Jesus was the priest and the sacrifice. That it was, it had to be perfect. Everything had to be perfect for God. Because God is a perfect God and he can't make an imperfect sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And so the only one who was perfect was Christ. That's why Christ had to be, he talked about himself being the temple, the temple of his body. Mm -hmm. He's the high priest. Mm -hmm. He's the sacrifice. He's the scapegoat, the fit man. Everybody, every part had to be played by Christ. Yeah. Amen. He Amen. Was the only one who could do it. Amen. To God's Amen. standards. Right. Amen. 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 Yeah, you couldn't you couldn't have a perfect sacrifice offered by an imperfect, you know, by a defiled high priest and vice versa. Amen. Yeah, I appreciated that thought that Durante brought up about. How he was unblemished as the lamb, and he w- in a way he, he ministered as being unblemished also. It's, Amen. It was it was perfect that way. And Amen. He's, he's a he's a perfect high priest for us, and that he has he can be touched with the feeling of our infirmity. Yet yet he was without sin. He's able to aid us, but he's also he's he's the perfect high priest for God as well. And that's that's more that's kind of why he's the perfect high priest for us. Too. <laughs> that's right. He can he can't just as Job said that he needed that man that could he could reach both ways, but he now now Jesus is, he is that man. He's perfect in that way that he can touch us and and touch God as well. That, the whole ministry of the high priest is said to be unto God. That's what he what he said, first said. Take Aaron and set him apart so they may, may be ministers unto me. That's what, that was the point was was for God to be 
pleased and satisfied. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, well, it's good news that we're satisfied as well with Jesus. Amen. 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 I like, uh, I forgot to mention how when it, it says that things pertaining to God, and then it just that it just reaffirms that if, uh, if it doesn't have anything to do with God, mm -hmm. then Jesus is not involved. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, he, he, his priesthood, all of it was thinking things pertaining to God. So, mm -hmm. you know, if we want, if yes. you, when, when it's inside of God's will, Jesus is involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's a good gauge for your everyday life. That's right. If it's Amen. not in your everyday life, if, if it's not where you are attending church, if that <coughs> emphasis is on anything other than Christ and God, mm -hmm. get out of there. Amen. Right? Because your end result is God's going to turn around and you're going to hear these words, depart from me, mm -hmm. I never knew you. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to hear those words. Right. And I know the brethren here don't want to hear those words either. So our life has to be completely involved 